Matt, the last uh, speaker in this section, the mobility section, is uh, Chris Baroni Bird. He's going to talk about the, the low cost e cart, mobility solutions for all the world. So, Chris uh, is from Liverpool, studied at King's College, uh, worked at the, uh, did research at the University of Tokyo. Uh, he emigrated to the US in 1992, worked for Chrysler. He has been inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame. Uh, at GM, he led uh, their research into advanced uh, vehicles from 2000 to 2012, did some really interesting work that I hope he mentions. Uh, and um, he's now uh, Qualcomm VP uh, for Strategic Development, and I'm happy to announce that Chris will be joining us in October to work in our group to uh, do to continue the research that he will describe today. Good morning, everybody. Next slide. So at GM, I uh, led the development of the autonomy concept and um, created about 30 patents on the skateboard concept, which is now being used by Tesla in production, and other car companies are using the same approach. I also led uh, the development of the electric networked vehicles, which were vehicles that we showed at the Shanghai World Expo, which were the world's first drivable vehicles that were autonomous, connected, and electric. And this is it. I also co-authored a book called Reinventing the Automobile, which was published by MIT Press. Uh, that was a collaboration with the MIT Media Lab. And in it, we talked about a lot of the concepts that are coming to fruition now in terms of autonomous connected electric vehicles and mobility disruptive models. Uh, it's been translated into numerous languages, and I have copies back there if people want to look at the book. Changing gears, um, I did some volunteer work and continue to do volunteer work in Africa and other parts of the world and worked um, in Mali, um, in this village, Nana Kaniba, uh, which is about 700 people on clean cook stoves, clean power, and clean water. Um, it's a village of about 700 people. And um, one of the things around solar power, you see these are solar panels donated by BP. We had a local entrepreneur in the village who would take um, the power and charge batteries, lead acid batteries, and then rent these lead acid batteries out to provide electricity. This person's using it for lighting at night to generate extra income and not have to burn kerosene, which is dangerous and polluting. But the electricity can also be used to reduce physical labor, like this lady here is uh, grinding corn, but a machine can do much more. It can also improve health in terms of uh, pumping deeper water that's deep underground, that's cleaner than the well water, which frankly is very contaminated, but again requires solar power to, to pump. Another insight I had is that uh, one day I had to walk 10 miles from Nana Kaniba to Karamokala to Kalima um, to fix water pumps, and I thought there must be a better way of moving between villages than walking, which was very time consuming. And so that got me thinking around a solar powered electric vehicle that could be rented out. So combining the ideas I've just talked about, because at the moment, the, the two options in the village was walking, which is physically demanding and time-consuming, or waiting once a week for the, the chicken bus to come to take people and goods to market, which is um, not very convenient either. So I thought there must be a better solution that's somewhere in between the two. And that's what, what got me thinking around a solar-powered electric vehicle. Africa has a lots of sun. Um, to put this in context, if you have a, a roof of a vehicle that's about uh, two meters square, you can generate two and a half kilowatt hours of energy every day just from the sunlight, pretty much every day of the year. And for a lightweight vehicle, that can generate about 40 to 50 miles range every day without having to plug in. So the idea is really very simple. It's taking the bicycle with trailer, which has existed for a long time, and this solar battery charger, which is portable but not a transport solution, and combining the two ideas. This is currently being used in African villages for charging cell phones, where there's already a market for this. But the idea is a solar-powered trailer that uh, can operate as a power source, but also be connected to a bicycle. Smartphones are an integral part of this. You can use it for um, diagnosing the state of the battery, the motor, the solar panel, for doing diagnostics, for doing data analytics on where the vehicle go goes, for doing route optimization, collision avoidance, theft deterrence. So it's a key part of the solution is to integrate the smartphone with this vehicle. Also, local manufacturer, people are worried about jobs being lost, especially with autonomy. 
So I'm thinking now about local manufacture using local materials, as well as local reuse of electronics. This is um, a 3D printer made in Marrakesh, which I saw last year from three uh, electronic waste. Uh, it's a 3D printer, so sophisticated. My daughter just came back from a Fulbright scholarship in Ghana working on electronic waste research. You see here the lead acid batteries are a major pollution problem. The vision I have is that we would use reuse lithium batteries at the end of life of uh, electric vehicles uh, because they still have plenty of life for this low power application that I've just been describing. This is two and a half kilowatt hour module. So talking about a couple of applications, this is favelas in South America. Uh, taking goods up to these stores uh, is a challenge today with the, the narrow streets. Cars are heavy and uh, quite wide. Bicycles and motorbikes have limited carrying capacity. So a solar powered vehicle locally made could be a good solution here. And then I'm also thinking about even places closer to home, for me at least, Detroit, where you see here, Metro Detroit is this area. This is a city center, well served by supermarkets, but there's many areas of the metro area that are food deserts, even though there are plenty of places where farm, farmland is being created to um, make food. So connecting food sources with food consumers is a, a real big opportunity, I think. So the solution I'm talking about is not just a solution or a replacement for an ox or a motorcycle or a car. It's a form of transport, yes, but it's also a form of electric power, and it's also a form of communications and data. And those four revenue streams, I think, can make for a very viable business model. So the solution I'm proposing is mobility and freedom for the, all the world's people. This is the proof of concept that I've been working on, getting free support from a local engineering company and University of Michigan solar car team. So it's throttle control, so it's an aftermarket throttle device added to a bicycle, and it controls the power from the motor, which gets its power from these lead acid batteries, which gets its power from the solar panel. So here, it's a regular bicycle. We're not using an electric bike or anything fancy, just a regular bicycle that's connected to the trailer. So the trailer can operate by itself as a power hub, uh, charging phones or grinding uh, pump, uh, corn, pumping water, refrigerating vaccines, etc. But when it's connected to a bicycle, it forms a transport system that can transport people and goods uphill. And here you see it operating. See, the person riding the bicycle is not uh, pedaling. He's uh, getting pushed by the, the trailer. He's controlling the power, though, with the ha his hand using the throttle control. The solar panel is at an angle because we want to be able to optimize the angle. That could be an app that we develop for the phone based on your location and, and time of year. So now comes the hard part, which is to take this proof of concept, ruggedize it to make a prototype that could exist and, and work for a year in a pilot program in a particular location and prove out what the true vehicle requirements are, what the true consumer needs are, and optimize the business model. That's the next step, and that's what I want to be working on with MIT Media Lab next month. Thank you.